In this video, I'll be using common questions to help you better understand the quantum model of lights and the photoelectric effect. Let's start with this question. A photon has an energy of 9.0 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So what is a photon? A photon refers to a discrete unit or packet of energy of light or any type of radiation in the quantum model of light. And what you need to know is that the energy of such a photon is given by the constant h, which is known as the Planck's constant, multiplied by the frequency of light or radiation. So in this case, to calculate the frequency of radiation, we can divide the energy of the photon by Planck's constant. The value of Planck's constant is a very small number, 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34. This gives a frequency value of 1.36 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz. This is the frequency of the radiation. When this radiation is incident on a metal with a work function of 4.1 electron volts, what is the maximum kinetic energy of a photoelectron? There are a few things to unpack for this part of the question. The work function of a metal refers to the minimum amount of energy that's required to remove an electron from this metal. This is provided in electron volts, which is an alternative unit to joules. A photoelectron refers to an electron that has been removed and further ejected from the metal when there's a source of radiation hitting the surface of the metal. And when these electrons leave the metal, they're referred to as the photoelectrons. They will possess some amount of kinetic energy because they're moving. And the kinetic energy depends on how much energy has been transferred from the photon, which is what we're given in the first part of the question, and also what is the work function of the metal. The maximum kinetic energy is given by the energy of the photon, which is given by H times by F, Planck's constant times by the frequency, minus the Greek symbol phi, and that is your work function of the metal. What this simple equation demonstrates is that the photon's energy is first used to overcome the work function of the metal to remove the electron first, and whatever amount of energy is left over or remaining from the photon is further transformed into the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. So this is why I said earlier, the kinetic energy of the photoelectron depends on two things, the frequency or the energy of the photon that we have in the beginning, and also the work function of the metal. If the work function of the metal is higher, that means if the energy requirement to remove the electron in, in the first place is higher, then we expect the remaining amount of energy that can be transformed into the kinetic energy of the electrons would be lower as well. So in the first part of the question, we already found the frequency and actually the energy of the photon has been already provided. All we need to do is subtract the energy of the work function of this metal. Now this is provided in 4.1 electron volts and to make the subtraction valid, we need to convert electron volts into joules by multiplying by the charge of an electron. So we take the photon's energy that we have in the beginning, and we minus the work function of the metal, 4.1 electron volts, and this is multiplied by the charge of a single electron to convert this energy into joules. This gives me 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules as the leftover amount of energy that is transformed into the electron's kinetic energy. In an experiment, light of a particular wavelength is incident on the metal surface, and the electrons are emitted from the surface as a result. To produce more electrons per unit time with less kinetic energy per electron, which of the following rows will achieve this result? So there are two main things to explain here. We need to produce electrons from the metal with less kinetic energy, 
but also cause more electrons to be released per unit time, so per second, for example. Now, in the previous example, I've already explained that the kinetic energy of such a photoelectron is dependent on two things. The photon's energy, to start with, of the radiation or light source, and then subtract the second factor, which is the work function of the metal. Now, in this experiment, we are not provided with any of the options to alter the work function, so we're assuming that the metal surface we're using is unchanged. So the only variable and factor that I can alter here to reduce and make the kinetic energy smaller is by changing the frequency. So if I can reduce the frequency of radiation, I will then reduce the energy of the photon that will be hitting the metal surface, which means there will be less available energy remaining to transform into the kinetic energy of the photoelectron. The options provided are related to the wavelength of light, which is inversely proportional to the frequency. Now remember that the speed of light or any radiation is equal to the frequency multiplied by its wavelength. So if I want to use a lower frequency with a constant speed of light, then I need to increase the wavelength. So I'm looking at either option B or option C here. By increasing the wavelength, this is correlated to a reduction in frequency, I will reduce the photon's energy that will be hitting the surface, and with the same work function, this will reduce the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Now, how do we produce more electrons per second? In Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect, he explained that when the radiation hits the surface, we need to consider the energy in discrete units known as the photons. And when these photons hit the metal surface, what happens in terms of energy transfer is that it occurs between exactly one photon to one electron. So if I draw it here, so this is a simple representative of a photon and we have an electron, the energy transfer happens quite specifically between one photon to one electron only. So the electrons will not receive energy from more than one photon. And the converse is also true. The energy from a photon will not be transferred to more than one electron. So whatever energy the photon has in the beginning, after using it to overcome the work function of the metal, it will be used and transformed into the kinetic energy of one single electron. So if we want to release more electrons from the metal per second, we need to have more photons hitting the surface per second. This is the only way to make these electrons leave the surface. Now, to increase the number of photons of the light source or radiation, we need to change the intensity of the light. So intensity is related to the brightness, so how much total energy there is, which is to do with the total number of photons present in the light source. If we want to increase the number of photons and more electrons released per unit time, we need to increase the intensity of light. So the answer for this question will be B. We want to increase the intensity of light to release more photoelectrons. And we also want to increase the wavelength of light to reduce the energy of one single photon and therefore reduce the kinetic energy of the electron that's released. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.